What's up everyone, my name is Platinum Howler, coach of your Coquitlam Red Gyarados, and today I am bringing you my week 9 match of the IBL versus the Toronto Leaf Storms, coached by OP Jellicent. You can see his team over on the right side of the screen. His two Z users are Kurum Black and Weezing. So, OP Jellicent is the third different coach in charge of this particular roster. Uh, originally, this was uh, Dreadful Dragonite and the Lost Ampharos. It was then taken over by Lieutenant Gold. And now, uh, now Jelly is in charge of the team. And since he's taken over, I believe he is, I want to say, 3-1. and one. So I think he's coming into this game with a 3-5 and five record. Um, but he's only played uh, half of the games for this uh, with this roster for the season so far. Uh, so... Of course, he is the D-League champion. He did uh, clap us up in the uh, regular season of the uh, D-League uh, a few months ago. So this will be our uh, opportunity for a rematch. So one thing that I noticed, through the four games that he has played so far, he has only brought seven different Pokemon from his roster. Uh, Buzzwall, Empoleon, Diggersby, Curran Black, and Mesprit have come to every game that he's played so far. Uh, Mega Manetric and Niheligo are the other two mons that he's brought. Niheligo he's only brought once, and uh, Mega Manetric he's brought uh, twice. So maybe actually maybe he's only played th three games with this roster. He might be two and one, coming in with a two and six record. I should probably have brushed up on that before recording this, but. Um, I, the, whatever his record is after this battle will definitely be correct on the, uh, scorecard and I will definitely have his record right in the thumbnail as well. Anyways, I tried to zone in on the fact that he's only brought seven mons on his team as much as I could. Obviously, I still have to prep for everything to an extent, uh, but these are the six that I decided on and we're gonna get right into it. So, uh, Zeraora is the only mon on my team, uh, not Scarfed. Uh, that can outspeed his Mega Manectric. And same deal as last week, uh, I'm facing a very, very fast Electric type that can that has every reason in the world to run a modest nature because of the adjustments I made in my speed tiers. Uh, so I actually decided to go uh, Jolly Max Speed uh, Zero Aura, like m literally as fast as it can go, uh, because a uh, max speed zero aura actually speed ties a max speed scarf diggersby so yeah that's i i I, fe I felt that i would why not just go max speed and uh not worry too much about bulk and if he is uh scarf diggersby then he might not even outspeed me and i can hit him with a close combat so originally i had a uh, hidden power of flying as my last move on zero aura instead of uh fake out uh, but that would have been exclusively exclusively for the Buzzwool, and I can still hit Buzzwool pretty hard with a uh, uh, Volt Switch, and I feel like I have other things on my team that can uh, deal with Buzzwool as well. So I felt that having Fake Out could be clutched just to get a little uh, bit of chip damage on certain things. Like if I get Fake Out chip damage, then I should be putting Kieran Black in range of close combat. Uh, I obviously I'm gonna have to find out if it is uh, scarfed before I decide to uh, go for close combat or it could even be Choppleberry and then just blow me back with an earth power or something like that so yeah Kyurem's definitely gonna be very difficult to play around but when is it not next we're gonna look at a very unique Mega Glade set at least uh, it's different from what I've brought uh, so I felt like close combat and Zen headbutt were the only two attacking moves that I needed uh, And then the last two moves I'm gonna try something pretty gimmicky. So uh, I feel like uh, Scarfed Hydreigon has a very very good matchup in this game once Florgis is down and Florgis might also be a potential defensive response to uh, my Mega Gallade, so I thought I would try to run Destiny Bond uh, to try and eliminate Florgis that way. Um, so if he is trying to, like, but the thing is, is 
he doesn't have to click Moonblast. He's not forced to click Moonblast against my Glade when my Glade's in. He could throw up a Wish. Um, so if I click Destiny Bond on the turn, then he throws up a Wish, then you might think I'm screwed, but I'm actually not. I've been wanting to try this, this, this out for a long time and see how this works, because he would think that I would outspeed and Des Destiny Bond gets uh, cancelled out on the following turn. Uh, however, if I click Trick Room, which is a negative priority move, then the effect of Destiny Bond should linger for another turn. And if he clicks Moonblast after setting up the Wish and knocks me out, then the floor just should go down at the same time. If, for whatever reason, I don't get knocked out by Trick Room, uh, I have a Celesteela that I can switch into that will, uh, that should be uh, guaranteed slower than everything on his team and should be able to uh, be an annoyance for him. So next, as we mentioned, we have a Choice Scarf Hydreigon without Dark Stab. Uh, so this is possibly kind of a choke and prep on my part. Um, Dark Pulse basically only would have been for the uh, for the Mesprit, and it also hits Empoleon neutrally. Uh, but I do have Earth Power for Empoleon if I need it. I also have uh, it for the Nihiligo and the Mega Manectric. The reason I decided no Dark Stab is because is really because I wanted I wanted uh, Draco Meteor just to uh, obviously I'm not cleaning with Draco Meteor, but if I get this into a position where I can drop a Draco and pick up and potentially pick up a kill or get a big hit off on something, then I'd like to be able to click it. There's also the fact that, as I mentioned, he's only brought certain mons uh, so many times in the season. He has Florges on his roster, but he has yet to bring it to a game. So it's not guaranteed that he even brings Florges. So I kind of, I don't know, I, I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say here. I think the fact that Florges hasn't come to a game really, uh, hasn't come to a game yet really affected how I uh, uh, thought this set through and I hope I don't regret not having Dark Pulse on this set. I think I would, I like obviously I would much rather be able to put myself into a position where I can lock myself into Dragon Pulse instead of Dark Pulse because Dragon Pulse is uh, five base points more powerful than Dark Pulse. Next, we have pretty standard Defense of Celesteela. This is like the uh, uh, dedicated uh, fairy check, dedicated uh, floor just switch in if I ever needed one. Uh, nothing too fancy, you know, standard Leech Seat protects shenanigans and uh, Heavy Slam for stuff like the floor just in the Curum. And then I am a, I'm running Relaxed Nature so that I can uh, I guarantee, well, I should be outspeeding uh, Empoleon if Trick Room is up and I can hit him with the super effective Earthquake before he has a chance to click Scald and potentially get a burn on me. Nothing really else to say about this Celesteela, it's, you know, you've seen it before, it's gonna be annoying and sit in front of things and try to uh, chip him down with Leech Seed and protect stuff. Um, okay, so this next Pokemon is something that at this point I wish that I could change a little bit, uh, but I'm not going to because I've already got the team gen and I don't want to uh, worry about trying to make a different set for it. Uh, so this competitive Wigglytuff, uh, it has Stealth Rocks and Heal Bell. Heal Bell is basically just there to uh, cure any Scald Burns that he might get, uh, but he also might try to toxic certain things. I'm not too sure like he might have um there's a chance he could have like toxic on his mega manectric if he wants to try to get a poison off on my hippowdon expecting my hippowdon to be the check to that thing uh but i don't know that's getting too specific but uh, it also has stealth rocks which is are going to be nice to chip down things like the kieran black especially and moltres as well if moltres comes but we do have a z move ferium z Dazzling Gleam on this and the reason for that is if I so one of the things that he can revenge Mega Gallade with is Alolan Persian if I have like dropped my uh, defenses after clicking close combat he can come in click foul play and that should do a ton of damage to me so uh, Wigglytuff is pretty much a hard stop to Alolan Persian 
Uh, of course, I take nothing from foul play. And if he wants to click Parting Shot, he will actually give me plus three in special attack because of my competitive ability. And at plus three special attack, I actually Oko a standard defensive Florgis with uh, Twinkle Tackle. So that's what I'm going for. And if he ha is not running any speed investment, I will also outspeed the Florgis. My other attacking move is Thunder because I can hit the uh, Moltres and I at plus three uh, special attack, I believe I will be Okoing a max specially defensive Empoleon as well. Uh, so that's why I'm going for the, le uh, the less accurate electric type attack over uh, Thunderbolt because Thunderbolt doesn't do enough. Uh, obviously I could have run Gigavolt Havoc if I really wanted to, but um, then my Dazzling Gleam wouldn't be hitting things such as the floor just as hard. The reason I say I would have liked to switch this is uh, I could have like ran something like Assault Vest on this instead so that I could be a switch in to his Mega Manectric every single time um, because on the, on the turn that he Mega Evolves, Intimidate is going to proc and would give me plus two in special attack. Um, and with an Assault Vest, I would be uh, guaranteed to live basically any two hits from him and get a very powerful uh, uh, and get very strong attacks off against his team. But then I wouldn't be able to run Stealth Rocks and I probably would have gone with something completely different in this uh, last slot here. Um, I thought a lot about what I wanted in this last slot and eventually I decided on an Air Balloon Flash Fire Chandelure. So with Air Balloon intact, this Chandelure has four immunities. Uh, assuming his Diggers B is a set something like, like say he's a Life Orb set with uh, four attacks, Quick Attack, Return, Earthquake, and Fire Punch. None of those moves do any damage to my Chandelure, so that makes Chandelure a guaranteed uh, switch in to Diggersby as long as he's not running Knockoff. I hope to not see Knockoff on his set. I think he would be more likely to bring Fire Punch over Knockoff, but we will see. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is this can come in against that. It can also kind of be an emergency switch in to uh, a Curum if he's like in a position where he can try to get a substitute up. I would think he runs enough investment on his Curum to outspeed me. Uh, I am basically just have leftover EVs thrown into speed as, as much as I needed. The HP and defense should allow me to live any one hit from Curum. And uh, yeah, unless it's like Z uh, Dragon or Z Shadow Claw or something like that. Uh, yeah. If he's like, I, I live Z Free Shock is is the most common Z move that that he would run. So I I live that I live that guaranteed from full HP. Uh, you might notice there is no hazard removal this week for a second week in a row. Uh, I debated on whether or not I wanted Tentacruel in this last slot just to be a rapid spinner, but I felt like that could potentially lose me a lot of momentum, so I didn't want to bring Tentacruel. Uh, Oh yeah, I should say we also have taunts. Uh, we can prevent the floor just from throwing from throwing wishes in the air if uh, there are things that he definitely wants to be healed up. So we can prevent prevent him from doing that. We can weaken him with uh, some flamethrower, some shadow balls. Uh, overheat I put on there because uh, if the Empoleon uh, switches in on a hit and it will take a lot of damage from it and if I feel like I've put him in range to where I can kill him with an overheat then I'm gonna go for it because that could potentially um, stop him from uh, putting rocks up as well if he's not in a range if I if I don't knock him into a range where uh, I can kill him with overheat then I have the option to stay in and click taunt and potentially risk my air balloon getting broken and taking a super effective scald uh, but I should be able to live one scald I would think Chandelure has a decent natural bulk, uh, as long as it's got a little bit of uh, HP investment in it. So, yeah, that's going to be the team. Um, hopefully, we can uh, get the win here, get uh, revenge on our buddy OP Jellison, uh, and uh, improve our chances of locking down a uh, first round playoff buy. So, we'll see you right back with the battle. We're back with the battle now, and we see Jelly's team. 
Diggersby, Curran Black, Buzzwool, Mesprit, and Polion. Those five Mons, as I said, have come to every single game for him since he has made his transactions. That one flexible slot that he has brought either Nihiligo or Mega Manectric for, we see the Nihiligo. So in my mind, I'm, I, you know, I think I have, I think I'm well prepared enough for Nihiligo. Uh, I don't think that uh, it can. Uh, well, I have, I have a lot of things that outspeed a non-scarf set, and I think a a scarf set has uh, trouble cleaning up, uh, locking itself into one move to kill me. So. Because neither the Mega Manectric or the Alolan Persian are here, uh, it doesn't look like Wigglytuff will be getting off any competitive shenanigans, uh, but I can get it in against most likely the Mesprit to try and set my Stealth Rocks up if I want them up that badly. Other than that, game plan is going to be pretty simple. Uh, just overwhelm him with offensive pressure right from turn one, and that's what I'm going to do when I decide to lead with my Choice Scarfed Hydreigon. I figure it has a good matchup against uh, anything. It can uh, force a lot of things out that he might want to lead with. And uh, if not, then I can just click U-turn and get the uh, momentum on my end into uh, whatever matchup suits me. So he does actually lead with the Diggersby. Uh, and I do predict him to want to uh, switch out uh, into the Empoleon. Even if he did stay in, I could U-turn out into my uh, Chandelure and have a pretty comfortable matchup no matter what, uh, unless he clicks a U-turn of his own. So I might have gone into uh, Celesteela probably expecting a U-turn if he had stayed in, honestly. But I can get my Zera Aura in, my Life Orb Zera Aura in for free and start doing some damage to him. Just go straight for the Plasma Fist. I don't anticipate him to want to bring in the uh, Diggersby to be immune to that hit because I could have just gone for a uh, close combat as well. It also would have hit the Empoleon super effectively. Uh, so Plasma Fist plus Volt Switch. Volt Switch does not do nearly as much as I was expecting to this Buzzwool, so that shows that he is 100% uh, Assault Vest. Um, and unfortunately, he goes for a Poison Jab. Uh, I guess he was predicting a Wigglytuff switch, maybe. Um, I thought that he would either want to click Drain Punch uh, or uh, Earthquake, and Chandelure with its Air Balloon would have been immune to both of them. Uh, but unfortunately, he does break the balloon on my Chandelure, uh, and I'm able to uh, knock his Buzzwool out with the Flamethrower. I thought a lot about if I wanted to make a double switch, predicting him to bring in this Nihiligo right here, because Flamethrower was a pretty obvious play, and he would not take much damage from it at all. Uh, but thankfully, I didn't make the overprediction, and I stayed in and just clicked Flamethrower to knock out his Buzzwool. As he gets the Nihiligo in for free, to click the Power Gem. So Celesteela is going to be my switch in, and I go for the Earthquake, expecting the Empoleon to come in again because he could have uh, uh, quad resisted my Heavy Slam. Uh, but it turns out that this uh, Mesprit is actually the Rocker instead of the Empoleon. Perhaps I should have expected that. Um, so it uh, it comes in and takes no damage from uh, my Earthquake. And I'm going to decide now to switch out into my Wigglytuff so I can get my rocks up. I know after he made that switch that he is going to go for rocks. So I figure, okay, we'll trade rocks now. I'll get my uh, Wigglytuff in here. It's not really good for that much else, seeing as Manectric or Persian are not here. So he tries to knock off my item. And when, once he sees that nothing gets knocked off, he knows immediately that I am a Z-move. And on the next turn, he U-turns out as I click... Thunder, but unfortunately I missed the first one, and as you can see, if I had hit the first one and uh, along with that second one, then I would have been able to uh, knock him out and not have to take all of that uh, uh, skull damage. And he also reveals to have Aqua Jet. And now I decide actually to blow my Ferium Z right here because there was no other time I would get to blow it. Uh, if he wanted to bring in the Diggersby to uh, be immune to the uh, following thunder and then just kill me off with whatever move he wanted to go for then I uh, I felt that uh, Going for the Ferium Z would be a nice play it but could potentially um, Oko him uh, depending on how much HP he has and whatnot uh, but he just he does stay in and uh, Just to let the uh, Empoleon die 
And right here, I could have brought in anything to finish off this Empoleon, but I decide to bring in my Hydreigon, which I'm going to let get chipped down a little bit more than I would like. I probably should have brought in the uh, Zeraora right there because uh, that was the probably the thing I needed HP on the least, considering I was already wearing my consciously wearing myself down with Life Orb recoil. But as I go for Dragon Pulse to knock him out, he's going to bring the Nihiligo in again, and I am locked into Dragon Pulse. I don't want to stay in. I won't be doing a ton of damage to Nihiligo with Dragon Pulse. So now my Celesteela comes in again, and uh, since the Empoleon is now out of the way, I can uh, click Heavy Slam with no drawback whatsoever. It would uh, knock out his Nihiligo, and it hits uh, the Curum super effectively if he would ever want to consider switching in that thing, but... Uh, I know that this is going to be a two-hit KO on his Diggersby. Uh, I have no reason not to click Protect on this turn to get the little uh, extra turn of leftovers to see what he wants to go for. Uh, he does reveal the Fire Punch, and I'm going to pull the switch out into my Chandelure, even though my Air Balloon is, Air Balloon is broken, because I think that he wants to uh, weaken this uh, Celesteela for a potential uh, Nihiligo sweep in the back. So I bring in my Chandelure and he makes a fantastic prediction calling my Chandelure to come in and is going to knock me out with the Earthquake. Uh, so that's not the worst thing in the world. I can bring in my Gallade now uh, for free, get the Mega Evolution off and uh, click the Close Combat to knock out this Diggersby. So the unfortunate thing is, is that knowing my set, uh, I only have Close Combat and Zen Headbutt as attacking moves, so I can't actually do anything to his uh, Mesprit, which is bound to be his switch in here. I wouldn't fathom that he switches in the Kirin Black because I can just Close Combat him, um, and the, mess the uh, Nihiligo can't knock me out either, even if it is, uh, even if it, it is Scarfed uh, because of my Gallade's Natural Special Bulk. So, I'm leaving my Gallade in here just to see what his uh, Mesprit might want to do. I thought that there was a chance he might want to go for a Dazzling Gleam there, and uh, seeing as I was at minus one special defense, I think Dazzling Gleam might have been able to knock me out. So that would have helped me uh, get rid of the Mesprit, but unfortunately he U-turns out. Uh, and he brings in the Nihiligo. So I get a free attack off here because uh, if the Nihiligo wants to attack me Zen uh, and is Scarfed, then he will um, knock himself knock himself out by knocking me out. And if he's not Scarfed, then I click Zen Headbutt and knock him out. Uh, but unfortunately, I missed the Zen Headbutt against the Mesprit. I click Close Combat on the next turn because I thought that he was going to click Stealth Rocks again uh, uh, and bait me to waste my turn of uh, Destiny Bond. But that turned out horribly for me because... I didn't click Destiny Bond, I don't have that effect active, and he did not knock me out with a U-turn, even with me at minus two defense. So that allows him to bring in his Scarf Nihiligo and get a free beast boost by knocking out my two HP Gallade. And I think you know what's about to happen. The only chance that I had right there is for him to get an absolute minimum roll against my Hydreigon and for me to knock him out with a uh, Earth Power. But, uh, uh, I mean, I, I would have felt bad if he had got that, uh, I would have felt bad for him if he had got that roll. I don't think I would have won either way because I would have been locked into uh, the Earth Power and I would have not been able to switch in uh, to Rocks once again. So I would have been locked locked into Earth Power. He still has a Mesper in the back with Levitate, so I wouldn't have been doing any damage to that thing. Uh, it would have basically fallen all on Zera or Zera, or Zera Aura's shoulders to see if I could uh, cl uh, clean through the Mesper and the Curum on on his team. Uh, but that didn't it didn't work out that way. The Nihiligo is going to uh, sweep me. Gets four kills. And uh, we're going to take a 3-0 loss this week, unfortunately, and fall to 6-3 and three on the season. GG to OP Jellicent. Uh, make sure you go check out his channel if you haven't already uh, down in the uh, description below. 
Uh, he hasn't been uploading IBL games because he came on as a replacement, but he is going to be in the UBL playoffs, so uh, go show him some support over there. So looking back on this game, there were a couple of things that I wish I had done differently. Uh, the first being kept my Celestila healthier. I had Leech Seed Protect on the Celestila to keep it healthy. I knew that he did not have a single immunity to Leech Seed, yet I never clicked it in this game. I tried predicting uh, what he would uh, what he would bring in and to get damage off against uh, those Mons. I mean. I don't think going for Heavy Slam after the Empoleon had been, uh, gone down was a bad play at all because anything that he wanted to bring in at that point was going to take a huge chunk of damage. But I definitely could have clicked Leech Seed uh, the first time I had brought Celesteela in, especially since I was at such a high amount of health. It would have been hard to, hard to imagine him leaving in his Neheligo to go down to a potential Heavy Slam or Earthquake. So Leech Seed would have been the... Uh, the 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 better mid, middle ground play all around there because he could have brought in either his Empoleon or Mesprit depending on whether he was predicting a heavy slam or an earthquake. So Leechy would have hit both of them. I would have allowed myself to stay at a uh, higher amount of HP to potentially take a hit from the Heligo later on in the game. Uh, but the biggest mistake I made in this game was uh, after the Empoleon knocked out my uh, Wigglytuff. I brought in Hydreigon to take extra chip damage that I didn't need to let it take. Rocks were already up. I knew that Rocks would be up throughout the entirety of this game because I did not bring Hazard, remo hazard Removal this week. So by bringing Hydreigon in there, I let it take an extra round of Rocks damage that I didn't need to let it take. And uh, he had already revealed the Aqua Jet, so it was pretty obvious that that was what he was going to click on that turn just to... Uh, get that last bit of damage off before I took him out. And with Hydreigon's natural bulk, had I not let it take that extra chip damage, I would have guaranteed survived a plus one power gem from the Neheligo after it had got a beast boost from taking out my Mega Glade. I could have knocked it out with an earth power, and I still would have been healthy enough to come back in on rocks one more time to lock myself into a dragon type move to deal with his Mesprit and Curum that he still had left. I think if I could have done it over again, I definitely would have brought in my Mega Gallade to kill the Empoleon instead of the Hydreigon, because I would have been fine with that taking a little bit of extra chip damage, uh, because I was a Destiny Bond set for crying out loud. I wanted him to take out my Gallade so that I could get a kill on one of his team members. So all in all, I think I came into this game with a solid, uh, with a solid game plan, but I did not execute it uh, well enough, and I definitely underestimated Neheligo as a threat uh, to my team. I thought with my uh, just the typings that I was already bringing was going to make him difficult for uh, himself to lock into one move uh, that would be able to sweep everything, because. I had uh, Gallade that resisted Power Gem, I had Celesteela that was immune to uh, Sludge Bomb, I had Zera Aura and Hydreigon that both resisted Thunderbolt that uh, otherwise would have been, the Thunderbolt would have been his best way to uh, chunk the Celesteela down as fast as possible. Perhaps I could have used the uh, Mega Gallade as my initial switch into the Neheligo uh, instead of the Celesteela as well since it would have resisted his Power Gem. That would have worn me down quicker to get a uh, Destiny Bond kill. Uh, it would have been great for me to get that uh, Destiny Bond off against his Mesprit because uh, I did not have great ways of, uh, of chipping that down. And with that out of the way, I think I would have been able to lock myself into a uh, Dragon-type move with Hydreigon. Uh, much easier to uh, potentially win the game with that. But you know, you can't win them all. We were previous, prior to this, we were on a uh, three match win streak. So I, I can't really be upset uh, falling to six and three at this point. I mean, we're still in a great position to uh, move forward into playoffs. We only need one more win in our final two games to uh, clinch a playoff spot. Uh, the only disappointing thing about this loss is it makes it a lot more difficult for me to uh, secure a first round playoff buy. Uh, at this point, I would need to win my last two games and get some help to uh, 
get that buy that I want. Uh, if I had won this game, then I would have been a much in, in a much stronger position. I actually would have been sitting alone at uh, number one in the standings with the seven and two record. There are, currently there are five different coaches that are tied with a six and three record, uh, but uh, I am the worst of those five coaches because my differential is pretty subpar. Six and three, I believe my differential is only plus three on the season. So that is why I need so much help to get that playoff buy at this point. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like down below, uh, comment down below as well, and subscribe to the channel to uh, keep up with all of our IBL content. Next week, week 10, we will be taking on uh, Luxant and his Groningen Gallades, and we will be going all out in that match to uh, get back in the win column, and win column and hopefully secure ourselves our playoff spot in the IBL this season. So... Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.